Commitment 2018 coverage. We are talking about race relations in Oklahoma. And this morning we are joined by Lee Rowland, a pastor at the parish, and Scotia Moore with United Voice Oklahoma. Discuss where we are in Oklahoma and how we can do better. Good morning. Good morning. To you both. Good We're morning. so glad that you're here. Likewise. Let's Thank talk you. about this and uh, United Voice Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. This is something that really was launched back in April. Yes. Tell yes. us about it, the mission. Yes. Well, United Voice Oklahoma was launched on the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's assassination. And the really neat thing about it is it, it's a collaboration of news stations, radio, um, newspaper to get out the message that we would like to have respectful, honoring discourse on issues regarding race. We want to spur on and catalyze conversations around race so that we can come together and have a united voice that uh, communicates who we are as Oklahomans, as neighbors in a way that's healthy and loving and caring of, of one another. How do we do that, Lee? How do you take such a big issue and boil it down to people coming together and having that conversation? Um, I think just acknowledging this pink elephant that's mm -hmm. in the room, uh, just coming out and just talking about it among leadership. And so we've got a number of uh, respected, high-ranking officials here in Oklahoma City that are part of the conversation and not to do any name dropping, but uh, we're really proud that they are a part of this movement. Uh, they say, hey, let me lend my voice, my time, my effort. So they come to meetings and so we're working with the police department, we're working with schools, we're working with churches to try and just, just welcome and embrace the conversation. It has been, unfortunately, kind of a taboo uh, kind of, we just avoided it at all costs. We can talk about anything and everything else in America except for race. And it, we, avoiding that has led to our demise. It's led to confrontations. It's led to death when it, it, it didn't have to be that way. If I just knew you a little bit better, maybe I would anticipate the best rather than thinking that I'm in danger and taking some action or saying something. So we do it one person at a time, one meeting at a time, but the big thing is leadership just stepping right into this conversation and saying, let's talk about it. Have you seen changes already or have you, do you have an example? I know change takes time. Yes, it does. But I imagine when you do meet with someone, do you see sometimes a change in someone's heart or suddenly a light bulb is going on? Their understanding? Definitely. Um, one of the things that we have encouraged <clears throat> are conversations around the dinner table together. Because um, if we stand at a distance and just make observations and accusations, then um, we don't get to understand what's in someone else's mind and heart, what is their life experience, but we all need to eat. I love to <laughs> eat. And sitting around the dinner table together and talking about these uncomfortable things as the family of our right. city or the family of our state. Um, I, I've seen, we've hosted several different events where we've had many tables in a room and you know thrown out some questions or had someone speak or had a panel. And the conversations around the table, um, you do see the light bulbs going off. Absolutely. You do see people saying, I never thought of it from that direction. And I don't just mean white people about black people, but black people about someone else's experience who doesn't look like them. Or um, So you're, you see light bulbs going off all around the table, a conversation. Right. And that's why it's important to come to the table and have the conversation. When you talk about that table, I immediately think even the nuclear family. And how do you have that conversation? Families that think they're doing all the right things and having those kinds of conversations. How do you, though, within your own family, make sure that everyone is on the same page and that everyone has that open, loving heart? How do you start that conversation? You think it may be there, but how do you know? Well. We think um, that you have to have the conversation with someone else, mm -hmm. okay? You've got to invite them in. And so as Scotia indicated, we have intentionally created um, uh, situations where 
people will have to eat dinner or have to eat lunch. So at that justice conference that we held a year, um, well, in April, mm -hmm. we ask everyone when you leave the conference, go to lunch with someone else. We chose some eateries on the northeast side that we worked with and we asked people to go to those eateries and, and, and just sit down and just talk. Let the conversation be organic. And when that occurred, uh, there are lots of things that are going on that we've just tried to coalesce and bring them together. But the, um, the salt table, the salty table, you can do your due diligence on that. There's been a dinner table, okay, see, these, all of these individuals are working together to try to change the narrative of Oklahoma and America. Right now, things are really not so good. According to the Pew Foundation, we are as divided today in 2018 as we have ever been. That is crazy. That is beyond uh, my wildest imaginations. When you think of the 60s and the 70s, 50s, the turmoil that was blatant and overt, and for their, for their research to say we are as divided today as we've ever been, we have to get off of our hineys and start <laughs> to have the conversation. And leadership needs to make sure that we're at the front of this initiative. Uh, pastors, uh, politicians, uh, business people, coming together and we're trying to arrange and trying to make that happen and it's happening slowly but we're seeing some real progress people that uh, they felt like well I don't really have a dog in this fight and now because of their relationship with Scotia with Lee with s these other individuals because of their relationship said hey I love you I know you I hurt with you when you hurt I rejoice when you rejoice and and vice versa uh, we're seeing some real progress being made and we're almost out of time, but if people are watching and they want to reach out, they want to figure out how they can be a part of this movement, how do they do that? Mm -hmm. They can go to the website, United Voice OK. There is a section where you can put your information in, where you can be informed. There you will also see across a wide breadth of um, news and media outlets, um, stories that have been so um, illuminating. I, I've been informed, I've been encouraged watching some of those stories and they've taken life and where news stations are normally competing with one another, they're actually working together to move this conversation forward, which we're so grateful for. But um, for the citizen of Oklahoma, yeah, it makes it a better place. I'm a mother of 10, I've shared that here yes. before. And um, we want to leave it better than we found it. We want our city and our state to be a place where our children are doing better than we are. That's every parent's desire for their yes. children. Absolutely. So if someone wants more information, they can go to the website. Scotia and Lee, thank you for coming back and thank continuing you. the conversation. And let's keep it going. Please. And you please. keep us posted for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. All thank right. you for having us. Thank you so All much. Right. So thank glad you. to have you here.